Welcome to Acquiring Access with Keisha Anderson. Good morning. My name is Keisha Anderson, and I am a student storyteller for the Faculty of Student Development. My pronouns are she and her, and this conversation is taking place on the Tecumlips to Shequetmik territory within the unceded traditional lands of the Shequetmik Nation. Uh, welcome to Acquiring Access. Um, it is a crazy Monday morning. Um, <laughs> my guest and I, well, mainly I had some technical glitches coming onto the, the show this morning. So um, <laughs> that was through a very interesting and um, dynamic wrench into the mix. So I have a very patient guest who was really wonderful and <laughs> stood by and helped um, just, just um, was really wonderful while I <laughs> dealt with all of this. So I'd like to introduce Stacy Pena who is a, uh, an accessibility advisor for the accessibility office at TRU. How are you today? Hi, Keisha. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, uh, thanks for, for allowing me to be here, inviting me. Um, I know that uh, we started a little bit late here, but I, <laughs> I am loving being here. So thanks so much. Oh, thank you for just being an absolute delight <laughs> throughout this process so far. and. Uh, yeah, you guys, you know, um, anybody who's watching, you know, it's to, it's that kind of thing, you know, you run into technical glitches all the time with this this virtual way of doing things. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just thank you so much. So, um, all right. So, can you? Would you? Um, first of all, first of all, how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was uh, in terms of the waiting until we got started here i was making me sit in my nerves a little bit more so i was like oh okay let's get the shakes out let's get the <laughs> let's get the nerves out and, and and dive into this because i'm excited yeah yeah absolutely no i i, I hear you 100 percent, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one so all right i guess we'll, we'll we will just dive right in then <laughs> um all right can you tell me a little bit about your role at tru and did I get it? Did I get your role correct? I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm an accessibility services advisor. I'm very fortunate um, to be an accessibility services advisor, and, and what that means is I connect with students um, to learn more about their disability-related needs and how our office can be of service. And so I listen to how their learning is impacted um, by episodic or, or chronic symptoms and, and that they may be experiencing, and Based on that shared information and supporting medical documentation, we brainstorm ideas and solutions that may allow them to have more equitable access to their education. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really great. Yeah, um, equitable access. Oh, I love this. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, um, so okay. I, I wanted to, to, before we get into like the really meat and potatoes kind of <laughs> part of the, for lack of another word, uh, part of the conversation, um, I wanted to ask a little bit about um, what you were like in school and, and uh, how, how school, how university was for you and, and what you were like as a student. Absolutely, for sure. I was, I actually studied psychology and I was a first generation college student. Cool. So I tried really hard to do well because my mother always wanted me to have a better life than she had growing up. Um, and her, her motivation actually led me to start college quite early in grade 11. So I took courses while I was in high school. Um, I took college courses while I was in high school as like dual credit and it was allowed me to save a lot of money. And um, after that, I moved away um, from my small hometown to um, the University of California, Santa Cruz. So I, I, I um, started to learn um, a lot of different things and on about psychology. And then during the summers, I would return back to my hometown to take community college courses, um, like general education courses for, for a fraction of the price to get ahead on my program plan, which was really really, really great. And then I also did a semester of study abroad at uh, Hong Kong University. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that, that allowed me to take really interesting courses like um, industrial organizational psychology, biological psychology, music in the mind, psychopathology. I even took an introduction to Cantonese course, so that was 
quite the challenge. Um, that was really interesting. I was, I would say as a student, I was really involved with various organizations. I'd like to dabble in different things and, and, and be a, um, a part of very um, dynamic sort of groups. And I even joined a, dan a dance club at HKU where I had to perform in front of what felt like the whole school. So I don't know what, how I got to do that, but uh, that was really fun. And I guess to do I, what's that? What kind of dance was it? It was a hip hop dance <laughs> club. Yeah, that's really, yeah. And um, I feel like all the opportunities that I had at different institutions and locations allowed me to gain a broader understanding of of like cult, different cultures and, and, and perspectives and, and a lot of learning about psychology. Mm -hmm. That is very, very cool. And, and uh, studying abroad in Hong Kong, so you, you would have been going to a, a city that uh, would have spoken a completely different language. And uh, so in, in a way you, um, I mean, you had to figure out how to access that. <laughs> that Absolutely. Was, that, yeah. that, challenge in and of itself but that is that would be such an interesting uh place to go i think mm -hmm. uh, it, it was it was well, can i ask you what is music of the mind yes that one was <laughs> that one was very interesting so we would we would learn about different pieces of music and how it would interact with um your yeah your thought process and so for example if you like go into a restaurant and it's playing music what kind of music it, it is and what why they're playing that music are they trying to set you at a level to feel like it's romantic or to feel that it's like um really exciting or so a lot of a lot of differences in like the tones of music and how there's different places and and um music that make you feel different ways yeah wow that's so fascinating um, I always thought I keep I, lately I've been thinking how how fascinating the idea of music therapy is and um, it, it, along that that strain too and how um, how music really can cha uh, alter your mood so much and and affect you and calm you or or excite you in in different ways. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that was just a little side tangent. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was rich, it was really interesting. And um, I find that um, I, I know it's interesting how a lot of different students find music to be helpful, and then some students find that they like peace and quiet during their studying. So it's interesting. That's very interesting as well to process information. Some some people it, it interferes with their sort of processing, and some they they enjoy it while they're studying. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Huh. Okay, that, that is really cool. So, um, all right, so I wanted to ask you next, um, if you could tell me, like you, you began telling me, but um, if you could flesh out more about your uh, professional pathway and how you got to where you are now um, in, your, in the position that you hold. Yeah, so I would say that my pathway has, has ha had quite a few different experiences, but overall it's involved serving um, diverse populations with various needs. And um, while I was in college, I took courses, um, experiential learning type courses, where I had the opportunity to work in K to 12 school settings to help teachers in their classrooms. And that allowed me to gain a better understanding of different student needs, things like that. And, and um, also while I was in college, I tutored Quite a, diff quite a few different subjects. I, I tutored math a lot. And um, also I worked for after school programs um, for at risk and low income youth populations. Mm -hmm. That was really fun and allowed me to be creative and think of projects for, for doing for stu with, with students. And um, I also, I shifted into working in behavioral health and um, case management as a dedicated recovery coach. So. Uh, that was that was very good as well, and I and I've uh, worked in college settings serving uh, students who are first generation, low income, or they had disability in roles that are similar to learning strategists here at TRU. So it's a bit similar in that sense, and in other roles, I would say that I've supported individuals with with their recovery 
and rehabilitation after they've been in crisis or have experienced mental health barriers. Um, and then also working with um, individuals with disabilities to find employment opportunities. So I did work in disability related employment services at one point as well. And um, when I moved to Kamloops, I started working in a different uh, couple of advising roles at Terry, and then I happily landed with Accessibility Services. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. You, you have such a range. Um, was, there, was there anything that particularly um, really drew you out of all of those many things uh, that you were involved with? What was that? Sorry. Um, I'm just interested to know, like, of all of the range of things that, of, uh, of work that you did and things you were involved with and um, various, like, things that you did, um, d what, what, like, what was the one, like, a couple of the things that really impacted you or drew you in, um, yeah, <laughs> if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so I would say a lot of the, the moments where I would work with individuals in, in crisis and making sure that they felt supported and that they had someone, you know, alongside them to move forward in a way that's moved forward to them because everyone has a different idea of what moving forward is. And so meeting, meeting them where they are and, and, and walking with them to move forward in, in ways that help them to move forward. Yeah, it was really, really, so it was, it was hard to um, leave work at work because I'd be worried about some some individuals sometimes. And um, but overall, I found it really rewarding to help those mm -hmm. students and individuals. Yeah, I, I love that um, meeting people where they are. That's mm -hmm. that seems like a a really important thing in all aspects of life. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this next and. Um, it's a little, it's a little bit of a heavier question, but uh, can you tell me about a time you had to overcome a challenge, and what did it teach you about yourself? Oh, I probably talk about the Hong Kong experience because um, that, <laughs> yeah, I was, I grew up in a small town of of five thousand people, and I don't know what got into me to go to this <laughs> one of the biggest cities in the world um, to study, and a different culture, a different language, different. Um, in schooling, I found it, I found it very challenging. Um, I did go to the University of California, Santa Cruz, which was quite a transition from high school. Um, but transitioning from UC Santa Cruz to Hong Kong was even more so of a challenge. And I was very, very into my studies and, and wanting to make sure that I did well in my courses and, and got what I needed to get out of them. And um, I know some, some of my my friends would would be going to different countries around Asia to travel, and I'm like, no, I have to, I have to focus on my studies. And so I would read like textbooks cover to cover, and very, very, um, and and um, tried really hard. And 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 the food was very good. It was different, of course, but it was very good. And um, and. Uh, what it taught me was that I can always adapt to whatever it is I want and I can dive into something even if I have fear and and just take it take it take it on and and um, learn so much for, from it because when you're afraid of something or when you think that you can't do something and then you do it and it's like on the other side of it you're like whoa I can't believe I did that so that it is yeah. incredible that feeling yeah yeah. Um, well, and I, I also think it's really brave. Um, anybody who, uh, oh, I think my phone's doing something funky. One moment. Sorry. Okay. There we go. I think that's good now. All right. But I, I think it's really brave. Um, uh, anybody who studies abroad, um, but particularly people who study abroad in a country where th their language is not the primary language. Like I, I studied abroad in Australia for a semester and that was, it was a big thing for me, um, especially as a visually impaired person, you know, um, figuring out a lot of things. And, uh, but they did, they, we still spoke the same language and we still, 
um, have like relatively quite a similar culture. So it wasn't like a huge shock or anything, but I just think it's, it's so enriching to hear the story. Like I, I love hearing the stories of, of the people who go and, and study abroad in, in countries that don't speak English or don't speak their language if they're coming here or, um, you know, et cetera, that kind of thing. So that, that's super cool. And, and I hear what you're saying about like, um, sometimes like facing your fears or, or stepping out of your comfort zone can really like build you as a person. Yeah, absolutely. That is so true. I was thinking about going to Spain actually, and Spain was a little bit more expensive, so I couldn't afford that. I didn't think I could do that. And so, and I speak Spanish, so I know it's a little bit different type of Spanish in, in Spain, but, uh, than I, than I speak, but, um, because it's like, uh, I think it's called Catalan or a different type of Spanish. And so because I couldn't afford it, it was almost like a good thing because it, it would have been too similar in my culture to my culture and to my language. And, and then it would, I wouldn't have necessarily stepped outside my comfort zone as much, I would say probably. So going to Hong Kong, which was a little bit more affordable, um, ended up being a great, great opportunity. Yeah. Did you, did you, were you able to pick up some Cantonese while you were there? Yes, I still know my members and I still know um, some phrases and uh, my, my husband actually, um, his family speaks Cantonese. So sometimes I can pick up what they're saying and, and um, <laughs> really neat. And when actually he's from Australia. So he, when oh. we go to Australia um, and I, I get to speak to them a little bit and what I remember, but um yeah, for sure. Yeah. Actually, when I was in Australia, I was hoping, um, I had plans to go, because I have a couple of family members in Hong Kong, um, and I was planning to go and visit them, but that was right around when uh, the big riots were starting to happen. Oh, um, right, yeah. Yeah, I, I decided uh, naturally against it, but um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's a place that intrigues me, for sure. Mm. And, yeah. It was so big. It was so big learning those like learning the currencies and and so also in and just learning um like the the how to get around. Even transportation was, you know, learning this this the metro systems and the and the buses and things that aren't typically utilized and just taking full advantage. There was something called an octopus card, so you would be able to use it on trains and buses and 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 boats and things like that. So it was really, really neat to be able to travel around and check out Hong Kong as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, do you have any any hobbies or, or as we like to always laugh about on here, side hustles on the go? <laughs> right, right. Um, I would say side hobbies. Um, I, we do, my husband and I do enjoy like, um, camping and kayaking, paddle boarding. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I'm really big into yoga. I, it's helped me a lot with um, an injury that I've had. And, and um, I would say um, before COVID traveling, of course, I really enjoyed traveling to lots of different countries. And um, what we're working on right now, actually, we just purchased like a little small like trailer. It's like a three and a half by five foot trailer. And we're hoping to to deck it out to make it like an outdoor living sort of little trailer to have like a kitchen slide and the 270 270 awning around it and and set up like a little um, ice chest to pull out from and and um, what else were we thinking making a stove kitchen yeah stove kitchen on it so that way that way when we just go camping we're all set to go. It's all ready to go. And so hopefully we're customizing it a little bit right now. And um, what we've done so far is we got bigger tires for it and we made it um, have a little bit of suspension. So it's a bit higher to go off those back roads and um, we painted it black. So it's a work in progress. And that's kind of like a hobby that we're working on right now. So we can get it ready for our upcoming camping trips. Yeah. Sounds really exciting. That, I like I like that idea a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So back to more um, more to do with your job now. So um, what is your favorite part of your job? We kind of talked a little bit about this, but yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah, I would say 
I like how every day is so different. Um, each student that I meet has a different story and a different goal, and I love helping them break down barriers um, that they may be facing during their studies so they can get where they want to be because I feel like I've experienced quite a few barriers trying to go to college, trying to get funding for my college, trying to trying to learn um, and and especially as a first generation students, uh, college students. So um, mm -hmm. I, I have this understanding of, of the challenges that some students might face. And so I just want to help reduce that as much as possible. So that's my favorite part to try to make sure everyone's getting equitable access. Mm -hmm. OK. What are some uh, uh, so what are some questions that you frequently get from students um, and what are some of the solutions that you typically try to provide for them? Absolutely, absolutely. So some students, when they come to us, they already know exactly how we can help, which is really, which is really great. And other times some students have never heard of us or don't know what we offer or how we can help. So when they come to us to ask us what we do or how we can help or, or what accommodations uh, are so we, we kind of explain those things and, and based on their needs because things aren't cookie cutter it's not just a ABC this is for you this is for you it's it depends like on literally every conversation so um, depending on what they are expressing they need then we can talk about different things a big thing is um, assistive technology especially in this current era of digital learning and on virtual learning. So um, assistive technology like speech to text, text to speech, there's organization um, note taking support or time management support, uh, processing information. So a lot of a lot of different ideas can go into um, a one on one conversation. So it's it's each is is very unique and a lot of the questions are the same in terms of like how can we how can we help? Um, but the answers all a little bit look a little bit differently based on the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that whole meeting people where they're at kind of thing that you were mm -hmm. talking. About. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, who who is eligible for your support? Yeah. So if anyone would like to come chat with us uh, to to talk about a documented medical condition, injury, or disability, um, they can. They can meet us to learn more about the supports, services, and accommodations available. And they can get in touch with us by scheduling an appointment with an accessibility services advisor. Awesome. Um, and your email is as at tru.ca, correct? Exactly. Awesome. A accessibility services, AS. <laughs> mm, you got it. So I have one more question for you, which is the signature uh, acquiring access question that we know and love, uh, <laughs> which is, what does accessibility mean to you? Yes, that is such a loaded question. <laughs> it is a, um, so I would say that it means, accessibility means equitable, readily available, and full open access to anything. Mm. And uh, at TRU, I would say learning without walls is how I would say what, what I would describe accessibility to be yeah I like that learning without walls mm -hmm. great way of putting it all right well I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today um, me yeah. too mm -hmm. thank you for being here <laughs> thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure and I'm glad we we made it on here <laughs> yeah, we, we overcame the challenges and we got <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Yeah, accessibility. Um, <laughs> yay, accessibility. Um, all right, so this has been Acquiring Access, and thank you to everybody who has popped on. And uh, um, yeah, everybody take care and have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye.